Hi, Hannah. Hey, how are you? Good. Good, good. I love the doggy pictures behind you. Yes, they're representing today. Finn and Brody. <laughs> Hi, Finn and Brody. You're the sweetest. Chewy is... I think I think he has gone to bed now. He's, yeah, he's done for the day. He's done for the day. Yeah. <laughs> I love our topic today. I do too. So good. So do you want to tell our yeah. friends what our topic is? Yeah, we get to talk all about walks and the ins and outs and goods and bads and all the things that walks can provide or not provide for many dogs. Yeah, it's interesting how walks end up being synonymous with good dogs and good owners. Right. When that's just not the case at all. Not at all. Oftentimes I'll ask people like, do you take your dogs on walks? And they're like, oh, not enough. It's fine. You don't have to walk them all the time. Have you ever had a situation where you told the client, you know, for a while, please don't walk this dog. This dog shouldn't be walking. And it's just, it's a huge surprise. Yeah. And it's often a relief because when those dogs, if you're telling someone that dog shouldn't be walked, there's probably a really good reason. And it's not fun for the dog or the human. So oftentimes it's a big like surprise and relief. And it makes a huge difference to take a big break from hard walks. Yes. It, if a walk isn't walk isn't providing what it's supposed to provide which is some time to decompress and it's providing the opposite and the the dog is be becoming stressed or the human's becoming stressed and it's time to t step back so with that in mind um we've we've already answered kind of our first point today do all need dogs need to go for a walk absolutely not absolutely not and so what are some of the reasons that you can think of for um, dogs not going for walks? Well, if a dog gets very overstimulated on a walk, that is not a fun walk for anybody. And um, we don't want our dogs to go out in the world and be hypervigilant and worried about everything and then bring that energy home. That's not fun for the dog or the human. So that's one of the main reasons I wouldn't walk a dog. I and mean, then similarly, you know, it goes with the overstimulation, but extreme reactivity is really hard to walk. Um, not only can it be a danger to your dog, other things out in the world, dogs, people, rabbits, squirrels, um, but it overstimulates your dog and we don't want them to practice those nasty behaviors all the time, pulling, lunging, growling, barking at triggers in the world. Well, and I think sometimes we forget that if a dog is displaying behaviors like barking, lunging, growling, they don't feel good. Right. Yeah. That's not fun for them. Ooh. I always like to tell people, do you like feeling really stressed and anxious? Likely you don't. And we can say the same thing for our dogs. They don't like to I feel think that that's way. an excellent way to put it. it. You know, if we, if we put ourselves in the position of uh, the dog, you know, and, and how we feel when we're stressed, that really puts it into perspective, I think. I think so too. Can um, you think of any other reasons why our dogs should not go for walks? Well, I think um, sometimes if there's a medical issue, then, you know, just like when we're not well, you know, our physical activity maybe needs to come down for a while. Same with a dog. Um, there, there might be an occasion where maybe the, maybe the dog has had a GI upset or, you know, some other kind of medical issue that means they're not up to par and yeah. it's okay to just give that dog a rest. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good um, one. And, and I, I think sometimes we forget that dogs like humans are um they have different sensitivities to temperature changes mm -hmm. um so maybe one dog that loves to go out in the snow and is not bothered at all by extreme cold another dog might be terribly sensitive to that and so just being aware that 
just because one dog loves being out in the snow doesn't mean another dog is going to be. Yeah, that's very true. I also don't like to walk my own dogs if they've had a big experience in their day. Like if they had to go to the vet and it was really rough or they got really excited at the window or something like that, they've already had a big spike in all their feelings already. I don't want to go on a walk and make that even worse for that day. Absolutely. That's a good reason not to walk them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, a, another thing that I think is really interesting is some people will think that walking on a leash is a natural behavior for most dogs. Not true. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> um, I think most dogs, it's a very unnatural behavior to be tethered to a human like that. Um, sometimes I feel like you look at a dog and you're like, that dog is perfect on a leash. And every now and again, there's a dog you put on a leash and they're like, okay, here we go. But most dogs, you have to teach them what it means to be on the leash. What are the expectations? How can we make this fun for everybody? It's not a natural behavior in the slightest. Not at all. Um, I have a neighbor who has a puppy right now and we've talked a little bit about, you know, how to introduce the leash and, and she's done a super good job of, of just taking the dog out without a leash and, you know, being with the puppy so that the puppy is getting in the habit of just, you know, staying with her off leash. But, you know, that, that there comes a time when, you know, we need for safety to have a leash. And so we've talked a lot about the fact that just these little incremental steps, you know, just the, the leash should just be little short periods of time, not just hopping on a leash and going on a, even a 15 minute walk. That's a long time for a beginning leash walking. Yeah. Yeah. You can always do like three minutes on Monday and then try for five on Wednesday and just have tiny little building blocks that build you up to that 15 minutes as your dog is ready. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so then how do they get exercise? So many other ways for your dog to get exercise. I think you are the one who told me that if we think about dogs, they can walk all day. So why is walking such a big exercise for them? Walks are great. They're fun bonding and fun times for us to have with our dogs if our dogs are up for it. But exercise isn't the biggest thing they're getting from their walk at all. Um, fetch is a great one. Any type of play in your home. Uh, Finn likes to play tug. So we play tug for exercise. He's always much more tired after a good game of tug than he is on a walk. Absolutely. And for people that are worried about tug not being a healthy game, there are ways to do it that where it's a very healthy game. And, you know, we can certainly talk to folks about that, but tug can be an excellent way to get some of that really um, high level energy out. Yeah, for sure. Does Chewy play fetch? He doesn't, but, um, you know, since we are doing agility, oh, right. um, I have a few little things set up in the side yard. So he loves to, um, right now he's learning how to do the weave pulls and we're, we're really at the beginning, but I take, um, I have a couple jumps then I have some weave pulls and I take a Lotus ball. Those are great toys so that, you know, the three petals come out and a couple treats go inside. And I toss that lotus ball to the end of the weave pole so that he just goes straight through and he gets super excited. Or I'll toss the lotus ball so that he runs after it after he does a jump. And he's, he gets great exercise. Mm -hmm with that and people don't have to have weave poles or jumps but you know throwing a lotus ball is great because not only do they get it then they get to work at getting that ball apart so they can get to the treat inside of it yeah so for dogs who don't fetch a lotus ball is a great way to to utilize a toy yeah absolutely we could also talk about as opposed to physical exercise how mental exercise is really important too so maybe your dog plays a good round of fetch, but then, um, or the agility and then gets a lovely enrichment activity. So they're getting that mental exercise too, that mental stimulation. Oh, absolutely. And dogs um, really enjoy games, um, even if they're not doing something with a toy or with a puzzle, um, playing a game of hide and seek with your dog in the house. 
such a good way to give them mental exercise. Uh, they love hide and seek. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Yeah. So fun it's to play too. And they come find you and they're so happy. It's a <laughs> lot of fun. And for these cold days, that's such a, you know, such a great game that you can do right. in the house. Yeah. That's a good one. And the box tower, you know, all the, all your Amazon boxes, make right. a tower, put some, you know, just put some food inside some of the boxes, let them knock it down, find food. There's so many different ways to give your dog mental exercise. Mm -hmm. Those box towers are Brody's favorite enrichment and he's gotten really good at it. So I tape kibble in the box now and he'll rip the tape and just has it the best time. That's I think he would rather do that than go on a walk, really. That's fantastic. Yeah, he's the cutest. That's great. So let's say you are walking a dog, your dog, and um, another dog comes up to you and wants to greet. What are your thoughts about greeting other dogs on leash? That's a really tricky question. And um, I, as you know, I always teach no nose to nose greetings while dogs are on leash. Um, it really sets them up for failure and we won't delve into that too much right now in this short conversation but if you are on a walk and there's another dog on leash it's not a wise idea to let those two dogs who are on leash do a greeting they have um they're, if they're tethered they don't have the freedom to do what they might naturally do leashes get tangled um that's when bad things happen Mm -hmm. If dogs are off leash and you're comfortable, dogs know how to greet. I mean, that, that doesn't mean that you need to greet every dog that you meet. I would much prefer that, you know, greetings are, are set up over time very slowly, but that's another conversation. So on walks, when you're walking your dog on leash, I highly recommend that, um, that if there's a dog in the vicinity that you cross the street, or just take a wide berth around the dog and just keep on that walk with your dog and avoid those greetings and stay on stay on your mission of your own walk. Yeah, I agree. I almost always advise people to not, well, I always advise people, no leash greetings. Even if it's like your family dog and you know the dog that you're meeting, set up a playtime in a backyard or a sniff spot or something like that to let them greet. Absolutely. And this is again, something that, you know, we're not going to just, we're not going to dive deep into on this short call, but this is a, this is a big subject. And if people want to know more or want some coaching around dog, dog interactions, we're more than happy to, to visit about that. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot. Yeah, it is. Yeah. On that same topic, though, what do you do when an odd, an unleashed dog runs up on you guys? You and your dog are leashed and an unleashed dog comes running. Um, generally, I stop and I stand as still as I possibly can. And fortunately, my dog handles it pretty well. Mm -hmm. But sometimes in the heat of a moment, the only thing that you can do is try to be, you know, if there's, if it looks like there's going to be an altercation, hopefully you have some spray shield on you or something, or something that you can toss, maybe even food to, you know, toss away from you to get that dog to follow the food. Um, if it's a, if it seems like it's a friendly dog, you know, whatever that means, right. You know, and standing very still, if you have a dog that can handle it, handle it and keeping the leash as loose as you possibly can, not letting go, but keeping your dog's leash as loose as it can be and letting them work through that. If there's no other human, mm -hmm. but sometimes if you have no other choice, you might have to, you know, you might have to get a little dramatic, um, just to do whatever it takes to protect your own dog. Absolutely. Yeah. That's always a, such a scary thing. It can be very scary. Yeah. I feel super lucky that, that when that's happened to me and Chewy, he does handle it well. Mm -hmm. But 
I have had many dogs that don't handle it well. And I've had situations where um, I've kind of looked like a crazy person, I'm sure, but I'll do whatever it takes to protect my own dog. Oh, yeah, me too. Absolutely. Yeah, not fun. The spray shield is such a cheap, easy thing to carry to always have that. It's like 12 bucks on Amazon. You can have it in your yeah. pocket at all times. And if you don't have spray shield or you choose not to carry yeah. that, at least carry some food that you can yeah. throw. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Oh, let's see. What else? Um, so can dogs get better at their at walking on leash? Can they develop their skills on leash? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that dogs can definitely learn to walk on a leash. It's very important to keep your expectations realistic and uh, all about your dog. Your dog might be not is not your neighbor's dog who's walking perfectly on a leash. So if you can have realistic expectations your dog for your dogs, I think they can all learn how to walk on a leash. A big help to that, is, though, is using a long line. Um, I always love to use a long line for any dog that's struggling. It's going to give them that extra freedom, um, and they can learn that they're on a big long line and can get their snips and stuff and then come back and get a cookie and then go get snips and all that good stuff. What do, do you think? I love long lines, but yeah. not on your residential street. Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. Oh, no. Where do, where do you recommend taking a dog on a long line? Um, I love to go to River's Edge um, on, was it First Street? Mm -hmm. And then Mahaffey is really great too. They have some good fields that you can play in and walk in. Um, those are some good spots. I was at the fairgrounds today with my own dogs and they have a good space for long lines, but definitely not on the sidewalk. No, that's scary. There's also some great farm roads out um, kind of east of town. If, um, you know, if that's somewhere where folks wanted to drive, but I used to take Pip out to the farm roads oh, really? and do long line walks out there. It was really quiet and it, it worked really, really well for us. That's a great so, idea. Yeah, it's, but on your residential street, not a good idea. No, too scary. Yeah. yeah. And long lines also can be really great tools for teaching recall. Yes. The best tools for teaching recall. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. yeah, investing in a 20-foot leash, 15 or 20-foot, is that's a great investment. Mm -hmm. It really is. For sure. We use ours all the time. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. What about um what about dogs wearing muzzles on walks? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Um, if it's gonna support your dog and offer maybe you some peace of mind as a human, why not? Muzzle your dog, take your cookies, put them on a leash, go for a walk. And the the other thing I love about muzzles, if I've got a dog that is learning their own skills on a leash and maybe they tend to be a little reactive or, you know, or, or struggling with some behaviors and they're wearing a muzzle, it reduces the probability of people or other dogs getting in my dog's space and causing a problem. Yes. They do naturally deter people, which is that person's problem, but it really works in our benefit when we're walking the dog in the muzzle. It really does. Yeah. It's a, it's a great tool. They're the best. And of course we had that great conversation about muzzles and we, we don't just pop a muzzle on a dog. We do some very systematic, um, slow training and building up to where they can wear that muzzle on a walk and be perfectly comfortable. So we don't want anyone to think if they're listening to this conversation that we just pop a muzzle on a dog and, and head on down the street. That's, that's not what we're saying at all. We want to take everything very slow in small increments so that the dog's never uncomfortable with the concept of the muzzle. Right. Yeah. Small steps, just like we were talking about leash walking earlier. Yeah. It's amazing how when we take small steps, no matter what type of training we're doing, how much we set our dogs up for success. Right. It, oftentimes I feel like people think it's slow. Like I have three minutes of this today and four tomorrow, but in the long run, you're going to get there a lot faster than if you just tried 60 minutes today or 
whatever it is it's going slow to go fast exactly yeah it is such a such an easy thing too because we're such busy humans so if we can find five minutes to practice with our dogs here and there and then we can see great success over the long term absolutely yeah well, do you have any other comments about our walks? I do. I just want people to know that KK9 does offer Walks Plus. Oh, yes. Because there's a lot of services out there, that, you know, a lot of trainers and dog walkers who will come in and walk your dog. But um, we offer whatever your dog needs. Right. Yeah. So do you want to kind of exp uh, explain it a little bit more? Sure. Yeah. Um, we can come walk your dog, of course, if your dog needs a walk around the neighborhood, uh, but maybe your dog struggles on a leash. So we can play fetch in your yard. We can practice some training that you're trying to work on at home. We can bring an enrichment activity or use your favorite puzzle board or snuffle mat. Um, we just come to provide your dog a little bit of love and some fun mental simulation during the day and some physical play too, if they want to go on a walk or play fetch. Um, I've been working with Melon, who is a bit reactive. She does pretty good on a leash, but I go to her house and throw the ball. That's what she wants to do. So that's what she gets to do during the day. So I go over, give her some love and throw the ball. It's a really fun little 30 minute break in Melon's day. That is wonderful. And that's really what folks want when they hire a dog walker is some support for their dog during the middle of that long day. And so we just feel that providing what the dog needs and not just a, you know, a cookie cutter experience where, yeah, now we're going to go for a walk. Yeah. We're going to provide what the dog needs instead of just, um, you know, something that might not meet that dog's needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the worst thing we could do is get that dog all overstimulated and hyped up while their family's at work and they have to struggle yeah. with that. Yeah, absolutely. They're really fun though. The walks plus. I love the I love the concept of Walks yeah. Plus. It's, it's, fun. it's a good one. Well, thank you for yeah, another fun you. conversation. I love these. Yeah, they're so fun. Yeah. I love it too. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll uh, be back next week with a new exciting topic. Sounds great. Talk okay. soon. All right. Good night. Bye. Bye.